Oh, man, there she is. What? Who? That girl right there. She comes in here every morning after her run. Oh, I'm obsessed with her. Well, why did you go talk to her? Way ahead of you. What? Where are you going? <sighs> and 1,000. Phew. You mean running? Ah, uh, let me think what's on my trophies. Uh, yes. You're losing her. Hey, I'm Brian. Hi, I'm Chloe. Nice to meet you. Hey, uh, y you wouldn't maybe want to grab a bite to eat sometime, would you? That sounds great. Awesome. You know, see, this is how you meet people. I, I try the online dating thing, but there's just too much competition out there. Hi, I'm Al Harrington of Al Harrington's Wacky Waving Inflatable Arm Flailing Tube Man Warehouse and Emporium. Due to a gut-busting divorce, limited people skills, and significant prodding from my therapist, I am currently seeking online companionship as a short but handsome, slightly hairy, newly single salesman. And I would love to attempt to convert my heavily embellished internet profile and carefully airbrushed, out-of-date photo into a night of physical intimacy with you! Oh, hi, Brian. Hey, you, uh... You didn't forget about our date, did you? Of course not. I was just thinking since it's so nice out, we could go out for a run and then eat. Oh, yeah, no, 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 you know, I would totally do that. I, I, I just, I've already run like so many K today. Oh, come on, don't be a wimp. This way you'll earn your dessert. Hey, uh, is your vision also reduced to just a tiny pinhole? Just push through it, Brian. Once you hit your runner's high, you'll catch your second wind. Runner's high? Yeah, my endorphins always kick in at the top of this hill. Brian, this is your heart. What the hell do you think you're doing? Stop. Brian, this is your penis. Don't listen to him. We're this close to Bone City. Brian, I'm here too. I'm hanging out with your penis and your heart. Okay, here comes the top. Chloe, I'm not sure I can... I feel it. I'm feeling the runner's high. It was a beautiful day. Wow, this is amazing. I never want to lose this feeling. Oh, Brian, that was incredible. So what's going on here? Just having dinner. That's Dad's chair. He's going to be mad. Wow, Brian, you sure have been doing a lot of jogging lately. <laughs> it's called running, Lois. Why don't you have some food? Oh, you mean fuel? <laughs> no, no offense, Lois, but that stuff is nothing but chemicals and empty calories. I think you bought girl running shoes. You know, in case any of you want to uh, come cheer us on, Chloe and I are doing the Quahog Marathon in a couple weeks. A marathon? B but what if that sexy boy has another bomb? Yeah, are you sure you can finish a marathon? I'm not worried, Meg. I'm just going to give it all I've got, like Scotty engineering the Enterprise. Scotty, we need more speed. I'm giving her all she's got, Captain. She can't take any more. Damn, I, I actually can give her more. That's great, Scotty. Mr. Spock, give us readings on... Uh, ca Captain uh, Scotty again. Yeah, you're not going to believe this. Uh, there is another lever here, too. The ship can literally go three times as fast. I, I'm sorry, but I feel like such a capital J jerk right now. It's okay, Scotty. I'm sorry, Captain. Scotty, it's okay. No, it's not. Eric's dead. At the funeral, I literally said the words to his wife. I was giving her all she's got. Scotty, it's fine. Sulu, lock phasers. Captain, I just got to jump in here. We, we don't have enough dilithium crystals to run the phasers. I've, I've lost all credibility, haven't I? Oh, my God! Hey, could you close the gate? Couple of calves got loose. <laughs> Pow! Brian, you're all sinewy. Your whole body looks like Paul McCartney's neck. Thanks. That's not a compliment. You look terrible. What does your girlfriend think of this? I dumped her. She couldn't keep up with me. Hey, grab me some more Band-Aids, will ya? I got like eight more nipples to cover up before my run. Brian, I I'm worried you're losing yourself in all this. Do you remember that phase when you thought you were a pointer dog? Was someone wearing my new high heels? You dick. Hey, you made it. So, you ready to watch me kick some ass? Brian, I think you've taken all of this too far. You know, there is such a thing as too much exercise. Stewie, I know you're worried, all right? And no offense, but I'm not taking advice from a guy who eats bread. Runners, take your marks. <laughs> ah! Oh, son of a bitch! Ow! Oh, my leg! Help me, somebody! Oh. <laughs> Brian, why does everything you touch turn to garbage? So, Bri, how's that ankle itch? Well, what do you mean? I'm just saying you probably have an itchy ankle under that cast. Starts as a tickle, and then you can't quite reach it? Not gonna work, Stewie. Yes, you're right. Best not to think about it.
even though it might be a little bug digging away down there, just nagging and itching. And, uh, uh, crap, I did it to myself! Uh, what is that? Hey, guys, you look like you're getting a little red. Maybe you ought to put some sunblock on. Joe, we just got here. Oh, sorry about that. He's got a little mixed up. Hey, glad you guys could make it. Hey, sorry again, Kevin. I didn't see you in the tub. Huh, what's all this? Buddy, it doesn't seem like the Griffins are leaving any time too soon. Oh, hey, Peter. Hey, Joe, what are all these pictures? Oh, nothing. They're just some stupid scribbles I've been working on for a children's book. I've been working on this book for nine years, but I've been too afraid to show it to anybody. Come on, Joe, you can't be afraid. Hey, what if Bono had been afraid to wear sunglasses? Then nobody would know about Africa. What's it about? Well, it's called The Hopeful Squirrel. It's about a handicapped squirrel who has to learn to overcome his disability so he can survive in the wild. As you can imagine, it's very personal to me. What, you know, you ought to do something with this. Really? You think so? Hey, trust me, Joe. I know talent when I see it. I mean, I discovered Mr. Peanut. Ordinary legume. Ordinary legume. Extraordinary Peanut! Peter, I just heard the best news. Wow, word gets around fast. Nice, right? No, Peter, I took your advice and sent my book to a publisher. They're going to publish The Hopeful Squirrel, and it's all thanks to you. Joe, that's amazing. So there's going to be a real live book out there with your name on it? Well, actually, I'm writing it under a pen name, David Chicago. I wanted to avoid catching crap down at the police station. They don't like anything artistic. They were pretty rough on my mime act. Hello, everyone. I'm Blake Walker from Piermont Publishing. Please join me in welcoming David Chicago. Okay, so, uh, hi, folks, and thank you all for coming. I know this would have been a great day to surf. That's not a joke! Uh, anyway, this is the hopeful squirrel. The squirrel. The same squirrel from the first page. Hope that the other animals would share their food with him. Please, said the hopeful squirrel, if you could all spare just one nut, I too could survive the winter. Sorry about that. Mommy, I don't like the wheel man. Hey, eyes front, I'm talking! Don't tell my kid what to do. Well, maybe if you did, I wouldn't have to. I think it might be time to leave. Joe, what are you doing? The, the squirrel doesn't even sound hopeful. It's got to be like, if you could spare just one nut, I too could survive the winter. Oh, I like that voice. He's funny. That's the man who passed out at the liquor store. Joe, quick, give me the book. I'm sorry that we mistreated you, said Buddy the Badger. Could you find it in your heart to share your nuts with us? Of course I'll share with you all, said the squirrel. For if I could not forgive, then I would be truly handicapped. Yeah! <laughs> Listen, Joe, how would you feel about your friend getting more involved? What do you mean? Well, you would write the books, and your friend Peter would be the public face of the hopeful squirrel. He would be David Chicago. Well, I... I don't know. Joe, this happens all the time. You wouldn't believe who really writes all those Stephen King books. Look, Peter can get this book into the hands of every kid in America. That's what you wanted, isn't it? All right. Well, whatever you think is best for the book. Great. So it's all agreed. Can't wait to work with you, Peter. What, what just happened? Oh, the bookstore closed and is now at Target. But don't worry. Our industry's fine. Excuse me, Mr. Chicago, could you please sign my copy of your book? Sure, I... Easy there, Joe. Hot Rod asked for Mr. Chicago. Listen, Peter, if you're going to act as David Chicago, I need to know that you're going to take this seriously and honor the message of the book. Joe, I got it. Trust me. Th this ain't the first time I've pretended to be someone I'm not. Oh, Gene Shalit, I am the ghost of Roger Ebert. Ah! And even in death, I'm a better critic than you. Leave me alone! Go back to hell! Good afternoon, I'm Tom Tucker. Welcome to another edition of Cross-Legged Chat. Our guest on today's show is local best-selling children's book author David Chicago. Welcome. Thank you. So tell me, how did you decide to write about a handicapped squirrel? You know, I'd see these cripple kids limping down the sidewalk on my way to work, and I would just laugh and laugh, and I thought, hey, put that in a book. <laughs> He's making people laugh at handicapped people. What's he doing out there? I'll tell you what he's doing. He's selling books. They love him. Yes, I have a question. Is the hopeful squirrel a boy or a girl? 
I'm a boy, but in the book, I'm drawn smooth down there, so it's not a bad question. Okay, that's all our time. We invite you to stay tuned through the credits so you can see where I buy my clothes. Peter, I think we need to talk. You totally screwed up my book. You're getting kids to laugh at handicapped people when I'm trying to inspire them. I'm afraid you're off the project. You can't kick me off the project. I'm David Chicago. I'm the one who wrote the book. Joe, come on, let's not kid ourselves, all right? Everybody knows my face now. And besides, I'm the only one of the two of us who can do a squirrel voice. Sorry, Joe, but the publisher loves me. The public loves me. I'm not going anywhere. Screw you, Peter. You know what? You've ruined this for me. I want nothing to do with the book, and I want nothing to do with you. Oh, one of his shoes fell off during the anger. Peter, Barney told me that Joe's very upset. Did you really take his book away from him? Did you just poop and then get into bed without underwear on? That book really meant a lot to Joe. I think you should talk to him. Hey, that book would have been nothing without me. And besides, he's the one who quit. Now the publisher wants another book, and it's all on me. I just hate to see you two in a fight. And on the same week when my sister and I are having such a big fight, too. All right, guys, ideas, ideas. We got a hopeful squirrel book to write. All right, now who's got something? I, 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 got, I got something. What if the squirrel has lasers that he shoots out of his eyes? Quagmire's on the board. Okay, what else, what else? If there's a bison? Is that a statement or a question? It is what it is. Ain't nothing gotta be nothing, huh? Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, hot moms who are married but looking. David Chicago! Hey, how many of y'all bitches like to read? It was winter in the forest, so the squirrel was happy he built that hot tub. But little did he know, a strain of super gonorrhea was gonna hit him so fierce, he'd wish he was still paralyzed from the waist down. On top of that, some son of a bitch killed his brother. Nothing but cops on the take and hookers on the make, said Randy the raccoon. What's a hooker? asked the bunny, who was gay. That in a bag of crank is my Saturday night, spat Randy. The end. You're awful. That was the worst. We had trouble hearing you in the back. <laughs> I'm sorry, Peter, you're fired. Peter. Look, Joe, I messed up. All right? I just, I just got so wrapped up in all the attention. The attention you deserved. I know how much this meant to you, and I, I should have just stayed out of it. Listen, I, I'm, I'm sorry I mistreated you. I forgive you, Peter. You do? Yeah. The truth is, without you, I never would have had the confidence to get my book published in the first place. And that's all I ever wanted. Friends. Frasier. Well, Peter, I'm glad you made up with Joe. Yeah, me too. Yeah, it just goes to show you, Lois, books is bad news. Well, except for the books they sell at Urban Outfitters. The Single Girl's Guide to Happy Hour. Dogs who look like presidents. This one's just pictures of people reacting to farts. I like where the USA is headed. <laughs>